now I've copied the question into Word so to save some time. So let's go. You deposit $200 in an account earning 7% compound interest for three years. Find the future value and the interest earned for each of the following compounding frequencies. Round all answers to two decimal places if necessary. And one year is counted as 365 days, whether it's a leap year or not. <clears throat> okay, so let's put some information in here or some designation so that we can work along easier. Um, let's say we put in the present value would be 200. Okay, so we know what numbers to put when we use the calculator. Okay, 7% compound interest for three years. So this value here is the IY value or the interest. <clears throat> okay, so it is for three years. That will become important as we move along these three years. So let's highlight it now. Uh, find the future value. So what we will do here is actually because we are finding it, we will have to do a computation of the future value. Okay, so that is being computed here. And what else? For the following compounding frequencies. All right. Now these frequencies, you might not have noticed it. They are these ones here, annually, semi-annually, quarterly, monthly, and daily. Could be either of them. So the question really has five parts, these five different frequencies. <clears throat> okay, so let's go back now and we will put in here, we will do the one for annually. All right, so with that, the annual brings the PY, you see, for when we are doing compound. Okay, so for compound interest, all right, we have PY is equal to CY is equal to whatever that turns out to be. It's equal to one if it's annual, okay? All right. In this case, it's annual, so that's the reason why the PY and CY would be one. Now, now the, the compounding frequency is this right here, but because of the use of the calculator, for now, we are putting PY equals CY equals to one. It is not always so, but for compound interest, it is. Okay, so for compound interest, that is the key. All right, so that should probably be highlighted. And so there we are. So that would be one. Annual means once per year. Now, this number here is really the number of years times the compounding frequency. So this value of N is really equal to what? Well, it is equal to uh, the CY number uh, times, okay, times what? The number of years, okay? So that's how that one works out. That is what CY is, okay? Maybe we can push this over a little bit and get it to work a little bit better. Maybe, now this one is usually quite small, so we can put this together. All right, so uh, maybe we will pull this over back a little bit. All right, adjust this, and there we are. So it's the compounding frequency or the number of compoundings per year times the number of years. So in this case, CY is one, and we multiply that by the number of years, which in this case was three. Okay, right up here it says three years. Okay, so that is this where I'm getting the three from. 
the one times three would be equal to three, but I'll show you how we can do that easily on the calculator. Okay, I, Y is seven. We had it up here. And the frequency as it's the same, it's annually, A-N-N-U-A-L-L-Y. Present value is the amount of money we're putting in, and that is the $200. That's right at the top, right up here, okay? PV, sorry, PV is 200 not PY, PY has already been inserted. <clears throat> okay, so payment, well, we're not making what you call periodic payments, so we're not paying annually, so we will put a zero in there. So this is more or less equivalent to a deposit, right? So let's call that a, a deposit, and there we are. So this is the one we need to compute. So we can put in uh, maybe CPT, so we know which one we're computing and then we will get a value in here. And then we can calculate the interest once we've gotten this value there. Okay, so let's make things better so we can have our calculator, which I did not put up as yet, but while we're waiting on that, we can go back here and we can have a look at what is happening. We can actually look at the question. Anyway, okay, so the calculator came up, so we are just fine again. Okay, so here we are. I guess we should put that down, put that out. No, we don't want to leave, so I guess, where do I minimize it? Okay, there we are. We can minimize that, so we got rid of that. All right, so now here we go. Okay, and there we go. We got rid of our little bit of interference there. All right, so here we are now. So now we can start to enter numbers into the calculator. So we turn the calculator on and we move it a little bit so that we'll be in line with where we want to see it. We can see it properly. Okay, so PY and CY, how do we enter these? Well, that is where we have to go to second IY. There's the PY up there, and that is one. So the one is there, or we could press one and click enter. Okay, CY is also one, so we could leave it as it is, or we could have gone and entered it. So now we have to get out of that menu, right? So we have PY is one, CY we could enter it also. So PY is one, CY is one. And then we get out of there, so we want to quit. So we go second CPT. All right, so how do we get this three for N? So I can take three and then I can go second N. It multiplied this three by the one from PY, okay? That's what it just did when I hit second N. And then I enter it by hitting, clicking on N again. All right, now to enter this value here, we put seven, present seven, then IY. Okay, this present value here, we may want to put it in as negative, as was seen previously in the other question where we did the simple and compound interest. Okay, so 200, let's put it in as negative, present value, because it's not in our possession anymore. We've placed it into the bank or some other uh, place where it can accumulate some interest. All right, at the rate of 7%. So payment is zero, so we zero payment, and then we are computing the future value. So we compute the future value and get the number 245.01. Okay, so let's give some space here and we put in 245.01. All right, the, the compute was only there for the or we could actually remove it from there and we can put it up here, all right? And maybe that would be a better idea. So this is the answer here and we can highlight it. Okay, so now how much is the interest earned? Well, the interest earned is what? Well, this is the future value and this is the present value right here. So the money, the $200, has now become $245.01. So we can say the interest, 
interest earned is equal to what? Yeah, you could say the future value minus the present value, which would be equal to 245.01 minus 200. We take the value itself, we ignore the signs, and that would give us 45.01. Okay, so this interest earned is, uh, we, it's 45.01, and that would be the answer for the interest earned. Okay, so we can highlight it in green, and that would be the end of the question. Of course, we could have just gone here, and then we subtract. If you want, we could subtract the $200. Okay, and that would give us 45.01. But please be careful if you did this. You recall the future value, and then you said subtract, recall the present value. We would have to make that present value positive. Then we subtract, we get the correct answer. All right, so please be careful. Now that was for annual, okay? So this one was the first part of the question, and that is for annual. Okay, so let's do another part of it. <clears throat> what about if it is semi-annually? Okay, let's go semi-annually. So it will be twice per year, so PY would be two and CY would also be two. Okay, what would N be? Well, N would be two times what? Well, it's three years, so in this case, it would be two times three would be equal to six, correct? Now, the interest is still the same, 7%. The yeah, the frequency will just fill in with the same semi annually, and the present value we can put in the negative two hundred dollars. Payment is zero, and then we will compute this future value here. So I will put in the CPT. So know that we are computing. All right. Maybe I should highlight that so that we know that we are computing and go back here and also highlight it right here, that it's a computation. That, that is the value that's being computed. All right, now if we, if we wish, now let's go, let's enter these values again, PY, CY, and so on. So remember PY, it's <coughs> at the top above the button, so we have to go second IY, and now we put in two and we enter. Now that will automatically enter for CY, but you can also enter the value by put, pressing on two and pressing enter. And we can check by clicking down PY, CY. And then we can quit by second CPT. Okay, now we have three years. So three years, we go three. And then to multiply by PY, I go second N, and then to enter the value for n, I press on n. So n is equal to 6, so I know 6 has been entered. Okay, the interest is 7, so we go 7 IY. All right, present value is negative 200 right here. So let's put that in, 200 zero, zero, plus minus, enter. We press on the PY, sorry, the PV button to enter it, we don't click on enter, we press on PV to enter the value. So 200 zero, zero, plus minus, we made it negative, and we press on PV, and that enters it into PV. Now zero for payment here, right here. Okay, so zero payment. And then we are computing the future value. All right, so we compute the future value, and it is 245.85. Okay. Now the interest as we did before, remember it was interest earned. Is equal to what? Well, we take the future value and we subtract the present value. In this case, it's 245.85. Then we subtract 200. Zero, zero, and that would give us uh, two, sorry, four, five point eight five. So that would be the answer for the interest earned. 
Okay, so we put it in here, 45.85. All right, so that is the interest earned, 45.85, and this here would be the future VAT. So if we want to get the interest, we subtract $200. Notice we don't subtract negative 200, but just 200, and that would give us 45.85. Now let's go back to the question. Remember, we had some numbers in here. Let's put the one in there. Remember, this was one. This was three, because it's three years, right? Remember the three years on top here, okay? And IY is seven, the seven right there, seven percent. So we put the seven in there. Now let's go down <clears throat> the rest of the question. Uh, PV present value is the negative 200. Payment is zero. Future value, we did the computation and the answer turned out to be not 245, but sorry, 245.01. Remember right up here, 245. 0 0.01 and to be correct we can actually just copy it and then we can paste it okay and then this one would be 45.01 all right now if you wish you could always put in dollar signs it might give you some indication that it's not a decimal and so on and so on but it will still mark it as being correct i will do that when i'm finished here so that you don't get distracted with that all right, so let's go back up here now. Semi-annually, PY is two, CY is two because it's twice per year. And this here now, it's what? It was two times three, which would give us six. The interest rate is still seven, and 7% 7 that is. The present value, it's still the $200. It's just the compounding frequency has changed. Payment is zero, and this here came out to be 245, I think it was 245.85. That is correct. 245.85. So let's go back and put it in. 245.85. And over here would be 45.85. All right, now we can check our answers. We can submit that part. We haven't completed the question. But I just wanted to check. And it seems as though we did it all correct. All right, we will stop here and on the next video, I will do the others, but I just wanted you to see that how the compounding frequency, you see if you compound more often per year, you get a higher rate of return, right? So it's not much because the money isn't very large, $200 and it's only three years. So that's why this difference is not much. All right, now remember I was going to demonstrate to you the, 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 the dollar signs in there. And what if I put this in as uh, positive and I put this in as negative, right? Doesn't matter where we put the negative, we can put the negative right in there. And let's see if it does take the answers as being correct. And it does, so we can put in either positive or negative. All right, so that is what we need to see on this video here. I think that that is enough, so at least for now, so we will end and I will stop the recording. So there we are, stop the recording.